Okay, so this is a high dimensional talk. This is a somewhat of a mixed audience. So let me begin with something uh, rather basic in high dimensional geometry. And this is the fact that the unit cube in high dimensions contains long segments. Um, so if you have um, the unit cube, 0, 1 to the n, if you have, um, if you consider the unit cube 0, 1 to the n in, in, in high dimensions, uh, then of course it has volume one. But as, as you know, uh, it contains long segments of, of length root of n in the diagonal from the point 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, and indeed, this length, length scale of root of n is quite typical in high dimension, it in many, many places. Um, and um, for example, it is roughly the radius of the Euclidean number of volume one. Okay? So also, if you take the Euclidean number of volume one, then it also contains a segment which is very large, okay, of, of um, length root of n. Um, and there is a more general fact called the classical isodermatic inequality. Uh, it is maybe proven by Steiner's interpretations, for example. This is the classical fact that if you have any convex body k in Rn, if its volume is one, then it contains a segment whose length is at least root of n times a universal constant. And the minimum is for the Euclidean board. Okay, so this is maybe some fact of life, some property of high dimensional geometry. If you normalize the volume to be one in a convex set, then you have long segment inside of, of um, length root of n. A question that we'd like to discuss is whether it's true that these really long segments in, in high dimensional convex set of volume one, whether all of them kind of pass through a very small region of the convex set. And maybe if you can remove just a small portion, just, I don't know, 1% of the mass of the convex body, maybe after you do this removal, you can avoid all of these long segments. Okay, so these are the questions that, that, that we want to address now. Um, so that's a trivial answer. Uh, if you, I don't know, remove points from the convex set with, uh, with some rational code or something, then in principle, then you don't have segments because you kind of cut, you remove points from the segment or some little interval. But I mean, I don't view, view this as a deep answer. So, so let's formulate the question a bit better. Um, so suppose that K in Rn uh, is a convex body of volume one. The question is whether you can find, does there exist a subset A some measurable subset uh, whose measure is one and a half, such that whenever you take any line and intersect it with the subset A, you get something of small, small size, small length. So you typically you get just intersecting just some finite union of, of intervals, and you want the sum of these lengths of these intervals, the, the Lebesgue measure of the intersection, to be at most some universal constant. This is the question, whether you can do it or not. If, if true, it means that there are long segments, but all of them go to a very small region in the convex set. And of course, I change this 1% to one half. And, and if you want, you can replace it by any other constant between zero and one. Most of this lecture doesn't really matter. But okay, for, for example, for now. So the first observation is that if you take the Euclidean ball, if K is the Euclidean ball of volume one, the answer is yes. Why is the answer yes? In this case, you can remove the interior of the, the convex, but the interior of the ball. You would take A to be a thin spherical shell. Okay, whose, radius, whose width is just one over n times its radius. And let me discuss this example in, in, in a bit of detail. So, so we have the, 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 we have the set, we have k the Euclidean ball, maybe, yeah. And let me try to make, um, uh, okay. Uh, um, I, I, I remove a smaller ball inside and this is the set A, just this thin spherical shell. Okay, what's the volume of this, of this set? Well, it just, uh, since, since I took one minus one over n, the radius, and then I get uh, uh, this quantity, which is, which is a universal constant, roughly. And now I want to show uh, that if I take an intersection with A, I get something very small. Um, now, if you take an intersection with this shell, you get typically uh, maybe uh, two segments in the intersection. And the length of each of these segments would be mostly constant, there are two ways to say that. One is because of the curvature of the sphere, because you could say that, you know, if, if, the, if this is uh, uh, r and this is epsilon r, then this is the maximal length would be root of epsilon times r, and r is root of n, epsilon is one over n, so you get the constant. Another way to say that is to use the convexity of the Euclidean norm, the square of the Euclidean norm. So you want to find, uh, you, you look at, at some line, a unit vector x and direction theta, and you look at the line x plus t plus t theta, and you want the square of Euclidean norm to be between two numbers, which are just 
a constant apart. So you look at this function as a function of t, and if you just substitute three values of t, and you look at this, the very different, this, this um, linear combination that, that vanishes the linear term, you just see that it cannot be of larger than a constant. Okay, so for the Euclidean ball, trivially eliminate all segments of super constant size, more than some universal constant. Um, can you get below a constant? No, we cannot eliminate, uh, you must have at least one, seg one line intersection which, which is above a constant just by Fubini's theorem. If you do the computation, if you look on any subset of, of the Euclidean ball of volume one half, you just integrate its size by going over the lines, one of the lines would have intersection at least a constant. So, so this is sharp for the Euclidean board. Uh, in fact, um, there is something slightly more complicated than Fubini's theorem, but if you have any convex body in Rn of volume one, if you take a special of measure one half, then you fi could find the line the intersection is at least a constant. I, I won't talk about the proof of this thing here, just because of lack of time, but, but believe you cannot go below a constant. Good, so for the Euclidean board, the answer is rather easy. Um, what's the next step? Um, Let's consider, for example, the unit balls of LP. Okay, so BPN is the unit ball of LP. It is normalized to have volume one. This our, our set will have volume one. And of course, when P goes from two to infinity, this interpolates between the Euclidean ball and the cube, and P goes to one that's a cos -polito. So this is an interesting class of bodies to consider and see if you can also there have this effect that most, there are long segments, of course, but do all of them go to a very small region of the, of the domain. Okay. Um, so let's make this uh, study a bit more systematic and let's introduce a quantity. This quantity is L mu comma A. So rather than only looking on, on uniformism of convex sets, we can more generally look on, on probability measures in our end. I mean, although the main case is uniform measures, maybe plus the Gaussian and, and oh, well, okay. Yeah, there's also non, non convex cases, but, but the 80% of convex set. Uh, set. Um, now, if you have a probability measure on u and some parameter a between zero and one, for now you can think about a equals one half, it's, it's, it's good enough. Then uh, the power is defined as follows. You look on all the subsets with measures at least one half, and you want to look at the set for such that all lines intersecting this set have small uh, size. So you want the superm of the size of the intersection with all lines to be uh, uh, as small as possible. This is this parameter. Uh, L uh, mu comma A that, that, that we uh, introduce. And we just explain that for the Euclidean ball of volume one, uh, L K one half is roughly universal constant. Well, L K one half means that you take the, 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 the uniform measure, uniform probability measure there. Okay, so this is one example uh, where we know to compute uh, uh, this parameter. And there are also other examples. So let me tell you a bit about the uh, phenomenology of, of, of this parameter. So our first theorem is the case where mu, the measures that we consider, uh, is the uniform measure on the unit cube, or maybe things that are, um, okay, or other things. For example, you could take the uh, uh, regular cross polytope or the regular simplex or the standard Gaussian measure in Rn. What we observe is that in all of these cases, this parameter turns out to be of all the value of n to one quarter. By the way, this theta means that it's bounded from a value below by some universal constant. So it's at least constant on the quarter, it was another constant on the quarter. Okay, so we have this answer about the quarter. Um, so this means the following, for example. It means that if you take any subset of the unit cube whose measure is one half, then you can find the line, the intersection with the subset of measure one half is of length at least n to the one quarter. That's the minimum, it's always true. Um, this is something, so you, you do not get a constant like you would get in the, for the Euclidean ball, but you can reduce the square root of n at least uh, I don't know, to the geometric average of root of n and one to n to the one quarter. Uh, why, where does this n to the one quarter come from? Um, well, it is not, at least the upper bound is not that different from the case of the Euclidean ball that we discussed. So what we said for the Euclidean ball, uh, we said, okay, well, most of the mass of the Euclidean ball is in some um, thin spherical shell. And for the Euclidean ball, the width of the shell was one over n times the radius. However, in these examples of the cube or the simplex or the Gaussian measure or the cosmoito, it's there is a thin spherical shell, but its width is one over square root of n. 
times the radius. So it's a bit larger. And if you do the computation of the curvature of the sphere, um, then you see that you get end of the quarter. And as it turns out, there's no, this is the, this is the extremal set A up to a constant. You cannot uh, do any better than end of the quarter. Okay, so we have some, I don't know, uh, other diverse set of examples. So you get end of the quarter, and the reason is this thin spherical shell. So you could say, well, maybe this question is about um, these parameters that appears also in, in, in the central limit of convex sets or, 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 or in other places, the, the width of the thin spherical shell that captures most of the mass of the convex set. So the answer is, is that it's slightly more complicated. And we can see that already by studying the case of the uh, LP balls, okay? So we look on, on, on the uniform measure on the LP ball, and we ask what's the width of the spherical shell that contains half of the mass. Um, so if P equals two, it's really, really tiny. Um, but if P is not two, it's basically like for the cube. Okay, so our convention is that we fix P and let N tends to infinity. And in that case, um, the width of the, the, the violence of the Euclidean norm is, is, is um, um, over fun up to some quantity depending on P, or the width of the sphere is one over root of N times its radius. Okay, so you would expect that maybe end of the quarter should also be the case here, but no, the answer is pretty different. So is the answer what happens for the LP balls? Um, so as we said, um, okay, we fix P, let N tend to infinity. Uh, in the two extremal cases, Y infinity, I'm gonna look on convex sets, um, you get into the quarter, but um, you get other answers for other values of P. So when P uh, ranges from two to infinity, um, the exponent changes, it's always below a quarter, uh, and the you get N to some power, and this exponent is, is for some reason rather um, unusual. I mean, I, I haven't seen it anywhere, uh, I think. The exponent is P minus two over four P plus two. It's not the type two quantity or anything. It's a bit, more, a bit different. Okay, one effect. Now, when P is between one and two, um, the constant goes to zero. So it's not, uh, it's N to the, uh, the, 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 the there is no um, um, power log behavior. And we only have some logarithmic factor log into some power. Um, okay, and let me emphasize all, all things here are, 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 we have both lower bounds and upper bounds in all the range of the parameters and, and the constant depending only on the parameter P. So we are very happy to have this uh, uh, full explanation of this problem. And of course, I can replace one half by any x constant a. Okay, so let us uh, maybe draw this exponent of n uh, as a function of p. So, so this is the graph that you get from, from two to infinity. It, can, it goes um, continuously and smoothly and, and at the limit you get quarter. Uh, but somehow from two to one, it, it's just zero. And suddenly there is a jump at quarter, at, at, sorry, p equals one, there is a jump to one quarter. Okay, and, and in light blue, what we see is the exponent of the log n. Okay, so this is the picture of the behavior of LP. We don't expect that, but this is uh, what nature gives us. Um, and maybe this reminds you of some, I don't know, phase transitions in physical physics. Um, and if you're thinking this uh, direction, then you also might want to look for some universality phenomena in some regime at least. So, so before, I mean, two slides ago, I almost said that end of the quarter looks a bit universal. We had like four examples in end of the quarter. Uh, but now when you look at this graph, it does not look so universal. So can you still save the day and find some reasonable class where this end of the quarter appears? We can do something. Um, and we'll work with product measures. So a product measure um, on our end, if we start, we only look at absolute continuous case. A product measure is, is will you say that it's admissible if two things happen. So first of all, the distribution of the individual component, um, at least in some interval, minus half to half, it should be smooth and, and positive with uniform estimates on the derivatives, uh, up to force derivative would mean. And as the condition that we put is that we require this, the distribution of each of the coordinates to be um, with sub-Gaussian pair. Okay, that's, these are the two conditions that, that we decided to work with. Uh, and um, well, in this class of four questions, you do have universality. So this parameter that measures the lengths, uh, 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 Lipschitz, doesn't two imply one. Uh, no, 
it have who could be say Bernoulli random variable and there's no density and, and definitely it's not uh, maybe two in some other way. Um, okay, okay, I think no. Okay, let, let, let me continue. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I was going to announce that, so L, L, L is the length of the segment, L stands for length. And the claim is that there is an universality. Let's start with A to equals one half. And so for any admissible uh, product measures, um, well, L mu of one half is uh, A to the quarter, okay? Um, so with this class we have universality. Moreover, for product measures, we can also uh, understand the dependence on A. So before I told you A is fixed, but now let A vary with N, why not? And uh, as long as A is not ridiculously close to zero, I mean, E to minus N or very, very close to one, E to the one minus E to minus N, as, as long as it's not too close to zero and you kind of have this large deviation behavior, which is more specific, in this rather large regime, you do have universal behavior. And, and this parameter up to universal, okay, these constants are universal, not really, they depend on the constants from the admissibility. So the boundless sub Gaussian constant and the derivatives, still, I mean, this admissibility is a not super strict condition. The Gaussian is okay, the cube is okay, that, that example. Anyway, you get behavior which is linear in A when A goes to zero, not, not too fast. So you have a, a, a length, the length of the interval is A to times N to the quarter. Uh, and actually that's, the upper bound is almost automatic because of some super additivity in for any measure, but, but the lower bound is require something. And when A goes to one, you get some, you grow up to root of N, right? I mean, when you have the full, the full set, you, you, and you think about the cube, you should, should get root of N. Um, and you do go to, go to root of N, um, kind of it's log one minus A to the one quarter. And, and you see that this, this goes all the way up to root of N, which is, you cannot, cannot get beyond that. Okay, so the end of the quarter is still, still appears in this problem. And in fact, there is another way where it appears as an upper bound. So um, we can use now Johann Z. Chen's recent uh, nearly optimal bound for the thin shell constant, which built upon the work of Eldan on this classical localization, um, and reads the following proposition. If you have any convex body of volume one, and we assume if you also, you know, that it's an isotropic position, it means that the covalence matrix is scar. You can always apply some linear transformation, shrink or, or, or dilate or stretch in some directions and make it isotropic. If you make this assumption, then uh, this parameter L is at most n to the one quarter plus little of one. Okay, so at least in this case, um, um, you don't go above n to the quarter. And indeed, in the examples of LP, we never went above one n to the one quarter because all of these cases are isotropic. So there is an upper bound, and this the upper bound just follows from this initial consideration as before. Good. So end of the quarter is a natural bound for the problem, but still, um, this is true if you have some convexity condition or some product measure structure. Maybe you can find some measures for which this length of the segment is higher than end of the quarter. Of course, it should be not convex at all and not a product measure. And moreover, you want to have lots of mass near and close the origin somehow, because if you want to know that um, maybe the segments go near to close to the origin, so you want to know that, I um, mean, if you remove a set of, you cannot remove everything near the origin uh, and, and have a uh, um, set of small measure, uh, this, this sort. So one possible choice of a measure high dimension that has rather lots of mass, not, not so, I mean, there's, um, yeah, Lots of mass not that far from the origin in some quantitative way is, is read as follows. So it's rather asymmetric, and it's the following measure. I take two Gaussian random vectors in the band and start Gaussian vectors in Rn, and as an independent random variable, just u uniform in the interval 0, 1, and I look at this random vector express uy. And the claim is that for this distribution mu, this is the law of this random vector, I do get length of intervals root of n, even if I go down to subset of measure 1. Okay, so so far only discussed phenomenology. Now let me explain to you at least some, something. I mean, here I can prove, prove to you the full lower bound. So this is the first proof of a lower bound, not an upper bound uh, as we had earlier. So suppose that you take a set A who's measured at least one half. Um, okay, this means that the probability of X plus UY to belong to A is at least one half. And you know that the Gaussian random vector is usually above root of N over two. 
So the probability that these two things happen, both x plus u is in A and y is at least, with length root one two, is at least one third. Very good. Now we use the um, complete probability formula or oh, whatever. If um, this is true randomly, then there exist at least two vectors x and y. These are the values of x and y, such that the probability of this fixed vector x plus y to belong to y is at least one third, and also y is, and also y is at least of length root of n over two. But if you think for fixed x and y, what is the minimum of the probability of x plus u of y belong to a? This is just the length of y times the intersection, the left diagonal of the intersection. So you get that the length of the intersection is at least root of n over six, as simple as that. Okay, um, let me just tell you about some um, results that this story uh, may be reminded of. Um, I'm not an expert in this direction, so I'll be happy if any of you have, have some comment about that, has some comment about that. Um, so the first result um, that is, looks somewhat related is the density has Jewel theorem. It was, I think, in the Polymath project a few years ago. Um, it is the following result. So if you take um, the, 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 the discrete cube, or maybe one to the D to the power N, this fixed N goes to infinity. If you have any subset of positive density, then it necessarily contains a combinatorial line. What's a combinatorial line? It's either a row, you fix all coordinates by one, or a column. I mean, okay, <laughs> the case are name dimension is ridiculous to, say, to distinguish between one column, or some kind of a diagonal. But anyway, and I won't say what's a diagonal, but in any case, it's some sort of, of size D. Okay, so you get some sort of size D of self and uh, 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 special, very special structure. The good thing is that you contain all of it. But if you kind of scale it to the continuum, you just get something which is kind of length one or back measure one and not into the quarter, like we know you would get in the continuous analog of the problem. So this also, remi uh, this also reminds of the uh, uh, Boseman Petit point log dimension, which is still open in some, in say for L equals two or three, uh, where you intersect um, not by a line, but by a subset of dimension L. And you also want the subspace to go through the origin usually, um, but okay, there are some, at least some analogy. Another way to think about, another possible relation is to, to form it in terms of the Radon transform. What we said, for example, in the case of the cube, that if you take the Radon transform of any subset of measure uh, of positive density, then it is bound from below in L infinity. So there is a line where it's big. And this is the kind of reverse direction from a case which is a set of zero measure events, as I mentioned, which does contain the line in every direction. So this is different logic. And maybe it's somewhat related to the zemer total theorem about so, so many incidences if you have n points and n lines in the plane, n to n to the power of Okay. Um, by the way, I'm asking the chair, uh, when did they start? How, many, how much time do I have? How many minutes? I'm close to five minutes. Okay, so, so I'll be brief. Okay. So let me just tell you a few things about the proofs. Um, maybe I'll try to end to finish in two minutes. Um, so, so the proof idea uh, is, is based on, um, so the, the, the law about it, this is based on the idea of, of, of middle decomposition. Our idea is to, to take the measure of mu, which is a uniform of some LP ball or some polygon, you want to approximate it by a mixture of measures on segments, of uniform measures on, on, on long segments. That's the idea. And from that, you can kind of argue a bit like the way we argued for the case of this uh, very long middle and get a, a, get a long, long intersection. For example, let's look at the case where we use the, the, is the Gaussian measure. In that case, there is a computation that you can prove that if you have, if you look at x and x plus r y, where r is not r is n to the minus one quarter, then total version distance is at most a universal constant. Okay. And therefore, if you look on r plus if you look on, on, on the Gaussian and X plus R U Y or use uniform, you again get something which is most uh, universal constant. So it means that if you have a set of, of measure one half, um, you could find some values of X and Y with what the measure is large and then you will get long segment. Or if you want, we found that there is a family of uniform measures on intervals, the intervals of length into the quarter that in this family approximates the Gaussian measure rather well. Okay, and there's something similar for the uniform measure on the cube. Okay, so this is roughly the idea of, of the proof. These needle compositions into of, of the end of the quarter. You cannot get more than end of the quarter because this would contradict the rules. That's the maximum thing that you can do for the Gaussian for the cube. Needles of end of the quarter. Okay, uh, I have one minute for so 
in the case P, okay, so the LP case, I want to say a few things about the proof, just very quickly. So again, you want to have some perturbation that, that, that have small total variation distance. Uh, though Elbow says that it reminds me of the, of the Mary Wagner uh, uh, approach. What we will do is that we take each coordinate and perturb it kind of uh, independently of the others. We add to it some, um, some noise. And, and what we do is, 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 is at the end, we do um, that, like that. Each coordinate will jump to distance n to minus beta times some, some, some bump function. And there are two effects to be considered. First of all, you want to have to be uh, um, um, not go outside the LP ball. And this gives you one constraint. And then uh, you look on, on, on uh, um, another aspect of the total relation distance. It gives you another constraint. And, and when you optimize, you get this, uh, uh, the power that I told you. And what's the experimental set? It's not really a thin shell, but it is of the following sort. There is some convex function H. And the extremal set is, is the set of all points in the unit ball. It's a very special convex function. It's to the P, to the square, it has some two regimes. But anyway, this is the kind of set that you take. You want the sum of the of H of Xi to be very close to the expectation uh, interaction with the LP ball. And okay, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the case for P is between one and two unless someone asks. And I think that I'll um, stop here. So thank you very much for your attention.